Today I thought I'd talk about routines because I've been talking about how I want to change certain things so like change my uh, what I eat and how I eat it and all that sort of thing and I've had some really good advice from people some ideas on you know changing up things like what I eat, when I eat, exercise, things like that I'm not very good at doing things I don't like. So let's say about seven years ago is when it really hit me that I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. And I've realised that saying no is fine and if I don't want to do something then I won't. If I don't want to do something that doesn't enrich my life or doesn't make me happy or doesn't add something to my life. So there are lots of things that I've changed probably over the last 10 years which I've done because I needed to. So a lot of them are like financial changes. I ramped up my budgeting and how I use my spreadsheets and how regularly I do that. Um, I changed how I spend my money, so I have reduced drastically my spending because I became very aware of things that I was buying that I didn't need to. And I'm not really a purchase person. I don't want for the latest tech. I'm not interested in subscriptions. I don't need to go out and eat every week. Um, I'm not a collector of anything. And I'd rather save my money for important stuff like emergencies, which, as we discovered in 2020 and since then, having emergency money is incredibly important. And it's only really recently, like this year, that I have specifically put aside that emergency money. There's always been money around for emergencies but now I have a proper fund that's put aside that is also earning its own interest and there's other little tweaks that I've done which now that I am earning better I have been able to invest in like the ISA like the private pension they're not enormous amounts of money I'm they, these are not going to be the kind of funds that when I retire I have enough to retire on but it's better than nothing and if I continue to do things the way I do then it'll add to the pot and I should be okay but I enjoy the money stuff so I enjoy finding ways to save money I enjoy starting up a new spreadsheet I enjoy being disciplined with you know putting all my spends everything that comes in everything that goes out into spreadsheets so I know what I've got so those were relatively easy things to work in. I wasn't having to do it because I felt I had to. I was doing it because I wanted to and because I enjoyed it. And I love that sort of stuff. I've got this thing about spreadsheets. So thankfully, when it comes to budgeting and things like that, I find that relatively easy. And I prefer to save money than spend it. Um, there are, of course, other things that I really need to work on. So I'm almost at the point where... I have depleted the ultra processed food in my house and going forward there will be no new stuff so one of the problems I have with routines where I'm trying to change things that either I don't want to do or I know are going to be a challenge is just doing things by a bite-sized manageable bits one at a time so with the eating just saying, right, I'm going to stop eating all sugar and all carbs and I'm going to start doing 30 minutes of exercise every day. That is not going to work for me. You've got no chance of me being able to do that and not cracking very fast. So I'm doing it gradually in bite-sized amounts that I know I can get my head around and I can build into my lifestyle. So my first challenge is just to stop having all the processed bread. So there will be no more shop-bought bread in my house. If I want bread, I will make it. And I've been making my own bread for years and I got a bit lazy. 
and I started seeing I started seeing good discounts in the shop when uh, I think it was two years ago I made a new rule that I was only going to buy yellow stickers and so when you when you see like a pack of bagels in the shop and it's only 48p you think great that's only 48p but it's 48p that I needn't have spent because I don't need that in my in my diet so instead of thinking oh that pack of bagels was only 48p I could not buy it and say I just say 48p so that will work for me and of course I'm also having to face the the addiction aspect of ultra processed foods that we all we're all a bit weak it's always like have a little treat have a little bit of this and I need to cut it out so by implementing a I've saved 48p rather than I got this thing for 48p that should be enough to make me do it that should be enough of an incentive and I resent giving big greedy retailers my money just so that they can have enormous profit margins so by cutting out the food that I don't need in my life I'm improving my life and my health and I'm not giving them my money so it's a double whammy really so that is the first challenge of me changing uh, I, I've sorted out my money the finances it's kind of done now it's ticking over I need a new challenge I'm ready for a new challenge and I think that's going to be taking back control of my health again I've done it before things have been slipping and you know perimenopause is also the challenge because it does weird things to your body to your energy levels to your weight to your hormones the whole lot and although I feel like I'm settled into a routine with that now and I know what my limitations are there are things I can do and I'm pretty sure that cutting out all the rubbish in my diet will help because it plays havoc with your hormones and your health levels so that's the first challenge the processed the ultra-processed bread uh, carbs has gone, or is almost gone, and then I'm going to build into my daily life the fact that I don't have those anymore. And then once I feel like I've got on top of that, I don't know how long it's going to take, a few weeks, a few months, who knows, I will move on to something else, and that'll probably be cutting back on sugar. Now I'm not too bad with sugar. I tend not to buy cakes very often. I don't buy sweets. I don't really buy chocolate. They're only things that I will get if they're on like a major discount and you see very few of them. Usually if I want a dessert I'll make it. So I make cake, I'll make apple pies, things like that, but not that often. So I don't think that my sugar in that respect is such a big deal. But there are other things that I can look at. So I'm just going to do it one stage at a time. I'm building it into a new kind of routine. And as I eat better food and as I eat less and I, as I eat less rubbish snacks, I will start wanting it less. And then I'll have my diet under control. And once I've started to get that under control and I feel more positive about myself, then I will start to think about how I can incorporate exercise in without me hating it because I hate exercise and one of the problems that I have is that if I hate doing something I will just not do it because as I said at the beginning of this if I don't like doing something I just stop do it I, I discovered that you don't have to do things you don't want to do I have been a gym bunny before I've been a bit of a gym addict I've uh, back in 2020 I really got into running and I'm very much an all or nothing, so I went from not running to just running a lot. And I did um, some injuries which took about a year and a half to repair themselves. And so that was a year and a half of not doing any running. And now I, uh, I've kind of tried it since then, don't like it. And, I'm, and now that the extra weight has now gone on, it feels even more unsatisfying. So I need to find other ways to build that into my routine. I've looked at doing like exercises I can do at home, like strength building and all that sort of stuff, but it's boring. And I'm very bad at building routines where the thing that I need to do is boring and I have the option to just not do it. So I don't know that that's going to work. I'm hoping that once the diet changes, that if I see improvements in my health and hopefully as my weight comes down, that'll give me the motivation 
to get back out and exercise more but at the moment it just feels depressingly horrible so I need to work with what my brain is prepared to do it's a psychological tactic I know myself really well I know what my limitations are I now I know how to stealth change routines to trick myself or kid myself or to just change routines for the better and once I get over the hill of I don't want to do this and discover that I feel better for doing it that's when it keeps on going upwards but I have to get to that point first so routines are a tough one and there are other routines that I enjoy so I like being on my own I am a massive introvert I don't have a need to be around people I don't deliberately avoid people but I'm not massively fussed about people um, I work from home I live on my own it's kind of, I live in my own space it's kind of an ideal situation for me but I realized that it has made me a little bit lazy and someone suggested you know go out and do some volunteering and you know find that niche that works for you which I have tried in the past I did try to do some volunteering back before COVID I volunteered for a charity and started to do a couple of afternoons in a charity shop and discovered that it's one of the most toxic workplaces I've ever worked in. It was just awful. I'm not going to go into the details, but it was absolutely dreadful. And thankfully, just at the point where I'd had enough, COVID came along and everything got shut down. And then I just never went back. So that solved that problem for me. Um, and I'm very sensitive to very toxic situations. I am very good at picking up the vibes from people. So if there's something going on, I can pick up on it. And <clears throat> if someone is a bit hostile or a bit toxic, I pick up on it and it stresses me out. I don't like confrontation. I'm not prepared to put up with it. I've done enough of that. I've worked in enough offices in my life, had enough toxic work cultures to last me an entire lifetime and again it's one of those things that I don't have to put up with it I was volunteering for heaven's sakes why should I have to put up with that and not even get paid for it so I've never done that and that was my last experience of volunteering and just didn't do it again didn't do anything related to it again and of course that was when Covid started so everything was off the wall anyway um, of course I have now forced myself out again a little bit because I now have the cleaning work that I do. It doesn't involve a lot of human beings, but there's one cleaning job that I do where the couple are usually in. And it's a reminder of why I'm still single, because they're always bickering at each other. They're always having a dig. Um, they need more space from each other, but they just sit there in front of the TV together all day, every day. And I'm thankful that I only have to put up with it for three hours a week. But it's another reminder, you know. So that's as much peopling as I need to do in a week, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, so I'm still feeling my way around. And, and that eight and a half hours of cleaning that I do every week is now a responsibility that I have to do, whether I like it or not. But I get paid for it and... It's a small amount of work, it's all local, so it doesn't include lots and lots of travel. So it, it's, it, it's bearable for eight and a half hours a week of my life. And like I said, I get paid and that solves a little bit of a problem because I needed to fill a financial gap and that has done it for me. Because it wasn't an enormous gap, but it was a gap. So that I've built into my routine. I've been doing that since last September. Um, I don't feel like I want to do any more. I feel like I've reached my limit on what I want to do with that because it is still boring and it is still routine. And every week it's the same jobs in the same place. And I think as I've got older, I've just completely switched off to having to do things because I don't want to. So routines, 
changing routines, better routines, but things that enrich your life. So yeah, the health thing is, is my major challenge now. If I can build that into routines, things will lead on from there. So think about little, little tweaks you can make. Don't do everything at once because it won't work. Do one thing at a time, like I'm going to cut out the bread. Then we're going to see what happens after we cut out the bread. And that will lead on to something else. And then that will lead on to something else. And then that will lead on to something else. So it's like a chain reaction. You start the process and it expands your mind. So that's what I'm doing. And that's how I manage new routines. It's how I build better habits into my life that benefit me all round. So have a think about that. Join me on my journey of routines and changing routines and bettering things one step at a time because that's the best way to do it. It's not about quick fixes. It's about lifestyle changes that will benefit you for the rest of your life. Think about that. Speak to you soon.